It's harming their ability to have relationships, sexual relationships with their future partners. Uh, that's another statistic we can share is how many uh, gentlemen report that they cannot be, um, yeah, they can't be sexually intimate with their partner in a satisfying way because of, they've been ruined by pornography. Unapologetic from Premier Unbelievable. Well, today with Mary Jo Sharp, we're going to be talking about love. Yes, that is the second episode in the Dark Room Faith series. Um, and uh, before we leap, leap into the story here uh, that this particular video is, is based on, Mary Jo, you've, you've, you've said before we started recording, you're not saying this is your speciality necessarily. Um, <laughs> you're a philosophy professor. Uh, <laughs> But you've you've done. You, I mean, if you're going to do a, a series engaging young people, you've got to talk about relationships, sex, love, that kind of thing, haven't you? I guess this is going to be front and center for a lot of young people, isn't it? This this whole issue. Um, and yeah, how so? How how did you decide you'd try and tackle this this particular issue um, in 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 this particular video? Sure. So we we were developing the whole series. We put out that a casting call to get Gen Z narratives, and this was one of the narratives that came up over and over was um, about love and relationships and sex and sexual identity. And so it's obviously a very important issue for Gen Z students. And so we've, we've got to talk about it. you got to talk about it. And um, I guess what, what are the, t I mean, you, you've obviously chosen one kind of narrative um, to represent, you know, a number of issues in this one. When you did, I mean, it's fascinating. I'd be interested to hear more about this sort of the back backdrop to, to how these stories were collated and so on. What what other kind of stories were you coming across? W was this a very common theme, you know, issues around, uh, I guess, uh, finding, losing love, um, issues around identity, sexual identity and so on. I, I guess this, this, is, this was pretty common among the stories you were getting fed yes. back. Yes, yeah. Um, the students who are living in a time when there's very much a push towards, you know, defining your sexual identity and all of this. And these are things that, you know, as a Gen Xer, I didn't have in front of me constantly. Um, so it was it was a sort of eye opening to see all the student stories uh, about how much they are having to deal with this and how the, the pressure that they feel to have a response. And so, yeah, there was a lot of uh, a lot of them touched on this. Now, I will say it's not the only thing that they're thinking about. And, uh, you know, there was suffering, there was doubt, there was the purpose of church. There's, you know, what is religion all about? They're, they're dealing with a lot of issues. But yeah, this was one that mm. popped up many times on pornography, sex outside of marriage, conflicting messages about um, sexual objectification um, and sexual identity. Yeah. Well, um, let's let's take a little listen to some of the video. Um, and again, I'll just reiterate these. These are really well produced um, sort of vignettes um, based on stories and conversations uh, among young people. Um, uh, so the kind of thing you would not be ashamed to, to show in any setting, really. Um, so um, so let's have a listen to, to just a, a little bit of this week's video. I have this one friend. The guy she's dating is a good guy. I mean, He's okay. He's one of the better Christian guys out of most guys, but they've broken up and gotten back together like two or three times, and I'm 99% certain they've had sex. I don't, I don't think they should be. God doesn't think they should be, but still, I'm kind of jealous. Spoiler. I have a thing for Emma. Yeah, that girl right here. And I feel, I don't know, she's thinking about everyone else and not me. It's confusing. Oh, and double spoiler, I'm a virgin. So what I know about sex is just a mix of stuff I've seen on the internet and a very awkward conversation with my father. Huh, anyways, I'm just gonna wait till I'm ready. What? Oh, you think I'm going to tell you my backstory? Maybe later. Mm -hmm. 
So tell us a bit about this video then that we, we just had a short segment of there, Mary Jo. What, what's um, the kind of stories that you're trying to tell in this? And uh, and yeah, just give us a sense again without too many spoilers of, <laughs> of what, what happens as you go through this video. Uh, you're going to get introduced to three characters who are friends and they are each dealing with specific issues um, regarding sexuality and love. And so the struggle is around how they view themselves in this, you know, this atmosphere, this culture that they're in. And um, the things that are very hard for them, like unrequited love, um, when they love somebody who doesn't even <laughs> pay attention to him or just doesn't have a clue. Um, but also they're going to be dealing with um, pornography. You know, we have a character who is engaged in watching porn and he is really struggling with trying to not watch porn. It's you know, his one of his mm -hmm. that's a common struggle. And then we have a girl who mm -hmm. is um, she's receiving direct messages like on Instagram from guys that are asking her to be <laughs> their sugar baby. Um, and she kind of feels a sense of pride in her body when she receives this sort of sexually objectifying message. And she's conflicted about that. She knows she shouldn't. But at the same time, it feels kind of good to be recognized like that. Um, and then we have a young lady who's dealing, struggling with her sexual identity and same sex attraction. Yeah. Um, I mean, all, all, you know, varied kind of ways in which young people are addressing issues around sexuality and so on. Um, I mean, the porno pornography one is, again, it, it, it's not as though that problem didn't exist you know when you and i were young it's just that the access to it has changed dramatically and the kind of the you know the, the accessibility and everything else so um where yeah i mean i think you can basically assume that a lot of young people are watching pornography and i think you just have to accept that they are bump if they're not watching it they're bumping into it quite you know quite easily um and I just think a lot of churches aren't even almost acknowledging that to start with. So I'm really pleased that you have actually addressed this because it is a real thing um, uh, among young people. What, um, where do you begin with this? Do you, do you, I mean, is this just kind of something you kind of have to try and kind of get people through? Or um, what, where would you even begin with trying to shepherd, I suppose, young people as to you know what's how to deal with that how to kind of you know navigate through that and especially given that you know they are it's almost impossible not to bump into it in today's day and yeah age. yeah that's a, it's really a tough one <laughs> so um one of the things that we're going to do through the series is we're going to open up the conversation and let students know that this is something that's happening to everybody not just them like it's a, a big percentage of our society um and there's in the resources there's um, a, there's the material for you to share that Gen Z is dealing with this concept of rough sex, you know, like the 50 shades of gray with the yeah. hair pulling and biting yeah. and slapping and choking. And, um, you know, it's become, we're giving them the statistics. So they realize it's the second most popular porn category searched. So we're trying to give them some knowledge. Yeah. Remember the old, um, the, this is your brain on drugs kind of thing. <laughs> Those, we're trying to show them that what pornography is going to do to them. And one of the powerful quotations that was in our uh, materials that I thought was powerful was uh, Billy, singer Billie Eilish, who said that she grew up watching mm. porn. And so her, she believed, she says uh, she agreed to do things sexually because she mm. thought they were normative mm. that actually were hurtful and mm. damaging to her. And one of the quotes that I thought was so great and how it connects back to the drug issue is she believes pornography wrecked her brain. And she says that wow. it's, um, you know, it's shameful. Like we shouldn't have this. It's a disgrace that this is what it's doing to kids. So I think part of the thing that we need to do is instead of not having the conversation, we need to let kids know how normative this is and, um, help them to see that it is, you know, it's not something that's beneficial to them, that it is harming them. Mm, mm. Uh, and it's harming their ability to have relationships, sexual relationships with their future partners. Uh, that's another statistic we can mm. share is how many uh, mm, gentlemen mm. report that they cannot be, um, yeah. yeah, they can't be sexually intimate with their partner in a satisfying yeah. way because of, they've been ruined by pornography. So this is opening up the conversation on what do you want from your sexual life? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're going to live a long time. So how are the things that you do now preparing you for your sexual life later? 
uh, and to flourish in it. Not just a, like, don't do this, don't do that, but how are we developing you to flourish as a sexual being? We've lived now for several decades in a culture which has said, since ever since the sexual revolution, you know, this is freedom, this is you being able to be you and express yourself. And actually what it turns into is freedom actually turns into a form of bondage because we actually become subject to, you know, things that, that eventually overtake us. Pornography is a classic example of that, where something that promises these kind of, you know, good feelings, delight, you know, freedom turns into something that actually actually inhibits us and stops us being able to be fully ourselves and, and, and so on and, and everything else. But I guess I guess helping people to half the battle is helping to people to realize that what the culture has sold them as the kind of the, you know, this, this supposed ideal of, um, you know, free love and sex and, you know, the ability to, you know, have whatever you want and have it now isn't actually the way that relationships were intended to be to be and 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 that's um you're but you're fighting a kind of a battle against the culture at that point aren't you yeah about the influences um that they receive and that they're you know okay so let's get a little philosophical um part of what we try to establish in our show is that um that god establishing boundaries is a it's not a don't do this don't do that because i say so it's a that limits are a healthy thing for the kind of thing that you are as a human being um, we mm. we try to help students understand that boundaries are in place to help um, around love in particular and how we enact our love and our pleasure in love to help us flourish um, so that we, we actually do need these sort of limits around things because if we don't put limits around things, then we actually, we don't know what they are or what they're for. Uh, and we don't know how to mm. uh, engage in them well for our own flourishing and for the flourishing of those around us. And so we understand that with some things, but some other things we've been told for a very long time that there are no limits, there are no boundaries, but that's just not realistic. We set limits around everything. We categorize, we um, you know, define so that we know how to rightly engage with it. That's everything. Um, you know, from fast food, from a hamburger to, <laughs> you know, what everything else. So I think that what they have a struggle with is they haven't been taught to go far enough with this understanding of no boundaries. Why is it limited to one area? Let's flesh it out and see what happens if we broaden it out to every category. Well, think about why there's laws in place um, at all. I don't care if you think they're good laws or bad laws. Why do human beings in a community have to have laws, have to have limits around things? because human beings are the kinds of things that need limits <laughs> because they're going to their vices left to themselves you know they're going to hurt people yeah. and that's from speeding to greed to all sorts of things um to abusive behaviors and sexual relationships so we need those kind of boundaries we need those kind of limits because we are human and that is that's not a bad thing that helps us flourish but it, that's kind of hard for us to discover, but we mm. need to have that conversation mm. with our students. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think it, it's, it's made more difficult by the fact that obviously the, in today's culture, a, a traditional Christian sexual ethic stands very starkly at odds with, you know, the way most young people, you know, are being raised and are being influenced and, you know, their peer group around them, unless they live in a, very sort of you know almost strictly christian bubble um they're, they're more than likely going to be finding it really difficult um yeah. and it's going to feel restrictive um the the kind of the kind of demands that are being placed on them about um not engaging in sex before marriage and um, maybe you know what the church's position on lgbt is and that kind of thing so um how you know you can see why that's going to be a struggle for lots of young people if they're if they're in surrounded by a culture in which is basically telling them quite the opposite to that. How how do you sort of begin to sort of navigate that disjunct between what what they're experiencing on the one hand and what you know they might be hearing you know from their church and from their, their youth ministry and so on elsewhere? Sure, that's um, we've talked about this in another show, but just helping them think critically through things. Um, so um, many times. I have to say, hey, we're not going to talk about your own personal experiences. We're going to talk about the thing itself. So what does it mean? What is love? And what does it mean to love? And what does that look like? 
um, and help them work through, you know, even ask them, well, what do you think love is? What's its purpose? What is it here for and what does it do? Uh, so, you know, helping them to do that, they can work through some of these issues um, by working out like where it goes logically, but we don't talk to them like that a lot, like help them think through things critically. And I think that's something that as the church, we really need to do so that they can say, hey, wait a minute, the culture telling me that I'm boundless and limitless is actually not realistic. That's not the reality that I live in. And here's how I know that and helping students get to that conclusion themselves through their own thinking. Um, again, just student ownership of their own learning, working with them to help them understand um, the implications of what they're saying. And I think that's one of the, the most vital things we can do for this current generation is to say, you receive a lot of marketed and targeted um, ideas that are targeting you and manipulate. There, there's a lot of manipulation, whether it's in politics, whether it's in advertisement, whatever it is, to get you to do X, whatever X is, or to come along board for X. There's not as much emphasis in developing your mind so that you can thoughtfully engage with those ideas and say, where do I personally stand on these things? And I think as the church, we can really help with that. So the, I've saved the toughest one to last, which is how, how, does, how does this video and how do you do you kind of navigate that conversation on ident sexual identity in particular? Because one of, one of the stories, as you say, is about a young woman who's uh, same sex attracted. Um, what's um, you know, if you can give us some of the sort of the the, the, the storyline there, and um, you know, if there is any kind of resolution to it. But what you know, what how do you, how would you uh, I guess have that kind of a conversation with someone who's who's wondering well may, maybe i am gay maybe i'm um you know and and what where, where do you begin you know with a young person who's maybe feeling that way yeah you just asked me a whole bunch <laughs> yeah i did so, that was lots of questions in one go Sorry. i know it's okay <laughs> um let me start with just the video and if i get to the like how would i personally um yeah. that would be great but i'll start with what we did in the video which is um we wanted to give students like a hot minute to think on this instead of just going, now here's what we think, you know? Um, we really are trying to be more invitational to them to think about these problems or these matters um, that they're struggling with. So in the, like in the video, though you'll see a reflection of our, of uh, dark rooms stance on this you're not going to have it like all again all wrapped up real prettily mm. that's not mm. a word all wrapped up real tidily <laughs> mm. <laughs> tidy neat and tidy um and we do that on purpose it's to give kids space to think through the issue for themselves and then when you go to the curriculum when you go to the guide you can see you know where we stand and you can provide that if that's your church's um way of handling it and you can always do your own way but that's that's the purpose of the video is to say have you thought about what this feels like for a person who's maybe same-sex attracted and what they're struggling with and that for that character um in the series that's what we use her for is that she opens up the conversation of um have you ever thought about what it's like for them and that's, I think that's an important thing that Christians need to know is that in the past, homosexuals have been marginalized, dehumanized. And so there's a conversation that needs to happen there um, in addition to um, what is objectively true, what's biblically true, what's objectively loving as well. So again, going back to 1 Corinthians 13, they're not to be divorced. So we try to help students yeah. open up to the conversation to begin with. Yeah. Uh, from that's that's the video like what are we doing in the video that's what yeah, we're doing yeah. give you a hot moment to encounter this well look as time's running out uh, i i won't i won't open up that can of worms any any further than we already have but um there's there's it's done really well uh, in these videos the, and as i say it's it's a great platform from which you can then have that sensitive conversation potentially with with someone who may, who maybe is going through that and and you can help to to walk with them through through what that means for them um but yeah these are these are the big issues that young people are you know at the forefront of many young people's lives and um thank you for producing something which recognizes it and which doesn't skirt it and which you know wants to sort of provide something where 
where you actually talk about the, the issues that really matter to young people. So so bravo to you and the team for producing this, Mary Jo. Um, we've been talking about the, the love episode from the Darkroom Faith series. And again, you can find out more at darkroomfaith.com uh, if you want to get hold of this series. Um, but uh, for now, thanks for being with me on today's episode of Unapologetic Mary Jo. And we'll catch you again same time next week. I look forward to it. Unapologetic from Premier Unbelievable. For more shows, resources, and our newsletter, visit premierunbelievable.com.